All India Muslim Personal Law Board seeks new blasphemy law. The All India Muslim Personal Law Board, or AIMPLB, is a non-government organization that works closely with the Indian government to promote the, quote, retention and implementation of the Sharia Act. And we can get into what that is in a second. On November 21st, around 200 members of the AIM PLB gathered in a two-day convention in Kanpur, a city in Uttar Pradesh, India. During the convention, AIM PLB demanded that the Indian government enact a blasphemy law that exclusively covers those who, quote, show disrespect to the Prophet Muhammad. The Indian Muslims for Secular Democracy or IMSD, a group of progressive Muslims, in, uh, condemned these demands through a public statement endorsed by more than 400 individuals. IMSD stated that they support, quote, the principle that there can be no place for a law criminalizing blasphemy in a secular state. Instead of demanding another blasphemy law, IMSD said that the All Indian Muslim Personal Law Board uh, should take recourse through the already existing laws against hate speech in our country. The group also highlighted how the current blasphemy laws enforced in Pakistan and Bangladesh create an atmosphere of religious violence, saying AIM PLB cannot be unaware of the notorious blasphemy law in neighboring Pakistan, which is frequently misused to hound individuals from religious minorities. All right, can you give it a simple version of what's going on here? So I wanted to cover this news because we talk a lot about um, like right-wing Hindus doing nut nutsy things in India. Well, I also wanted to cover this powerful conservative Muslim body also pushing for nutsy things in India. So there is a group called the All Indian Muslim Personal Law Board, and this is like a quasi-governmental body and they are basically, um, and people from India can correct me if I'm um, not being precise, but they give the government recommendations on how they enforce Muslim personal law. So there are many forms of personal law in India and um, split broadly across religious lines. And the Muslim personal law is the only one that isn't co like codified into law there's still interpretations of the Sharia. India is actually a country that allows implementation of Sharia law um, yeah. through the Sharia wow. Act, also known as Muslim personal law. So this body- I mean, like that in has, Israel. Yeah, this body that yeah. has quite a lot of power because they give the government's recommendations on Muslim personal law, um, they were demanding additional blasphemy laws. They were demanding blasphemy laws. And um so there's two laws. Basically what's happening what what's happening in countries like India and Israel, you have separate laws for separate people, right? Yes. Which is like the opposite of what a country's supposed to be like instead of having everybody, every citizen having to abide by one law, you have groups of people that at least in their personal like not laws not, not laws regarding crimes but like family laws personal laws they get to have appeals to a different court i guess in, in nigeria is another example that has that a lot, a, a lot of people don't know that in israel we do have sharia courts like that muslims go for like mm -hmm. divorce and family matters to a court they, they could go to a court separate from the rest of the country which is unbelievable that taxpayer money is being spent on like having separate laws for different people right yeah. Um, so yeah, so you're saying the body that is responsible for um, advising India's government to 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 what the like I, I don't understand like I thought these personal laws are supposed to be about just like family issues like it's primarily yeah so, marriage so inheritance stuff so like how, that. how could you how could you have blasphemy introduced to that like blasphemy like blasphemy law makes it a crime. I guess Nigeria has that. Yeah, Nigeria has Nigeria has like blasphemy laws for Muslims, but not for Christians, right? So I guess India wants a version of Nigeria. So they 
the the all Indian Muslim personal law board when they were making this statement because they had their annual meeting or whatever they were talking about how there's basically not appropriate recourse when people insult the prophet or Islam and um so they were arguing that there should be uh, additional blasphemy law to address this issue now the the progressive Muslim group called Indian Muslims for Secular Democracy. Ow. Um, <laughs> um, they they were pushing back against this and they say, we actually have a secular law to handle this. So the secular law that they're talking about, they're saying you we already have recourse for this. And this is the law that we're very familiar with. It's section two nine, no, yeah, section two nine five A. And this yeah, is the section of the law us. that we have been they've yes. been hitting us with <laughs> and so oh, they're saying actually we, we condemn any push for more blasphemy laws mm. you should address this issue through the laws that is already on the books that is available to all citizens now in the way yeah. that the by the way the, it's very interesting that like the pushback right now against in india for muslim for the muslim group trying to introduce blasphemy law the pushback against it is like it's not that hey blasphemy laws are barbaric and like backward and like we don't need blasphemy laws the pushback against it like oh don't worry we got you covered we already have blasphemy laws. <laughs> no well actually armin the the secular democratic muslim group they actually oh. did talk about this being a bad idea on the basis of the religious fanaticism that right. the kind of blasphemy law that they were pushing for promotes. They specifically cite I... Bangladesh and Pakistan as examples of how blasphemy laws in the ways that this body was pushing for are harmful, create violence, and are just destructive to society. They even- And also, and also this is not gonna turn uh, turn good for Muslims in India. Like you guys, like if you're a minority in a, in a Hindu country or in any other country, like maybe pushing for blasphemy laws is going to backfire on you. Like you should not. <laughs> like here's, this is so bizarre because like the the people that understand secularism the most um, and understand how destructive blasphemy laws are are usually minorities. Okay, mm -hmm. within a within the country. Like you know, the, for example, like not understanding how destructive blasphemy laws are is not inherent with people's religion, right? Because like many muslims in muslim majority co countries they want blasphemy laws right like hey, we want to be we want to be able to tell people to shut up okay but get the people the muslims who understand why blasphemy laws are a bad idea are muslims in minority like in, in a place where they're a minority right like for example i don't know muslims in europe or north america right but this is so bizarre that you are a muslim community in india so you are the minority and you cannot see how this is going to be used against you if you normalize this kind of stuff like you should you guys you, there is nobody in india that should be more motivated to promote secularism more than muslims you know like it's within your like it's within your interest but go on I think it's really interesting. Okay. So I was talking to a friend of mine who's a lawyer in India, and um, I was t asking her about this because this whole idea of personal laws for like Sikhs, Parsis, Christians, Hindus, and then Muslims, like having it all split just seems so confusing to me and the different standards. Um, and I was asking her, I was like, this feels like such an obvious major violation of secularism and it's also just very confusing it's like getting into these issues and how the different personal laws works confuses me very much as a foreigner and she was basically explaining to me that this partially goes back to the history of partition where to a certain extent these laws were constructed so that um or maintained uh, because technically the personal law does, the Muslim personal law does go back to 1937. Um, but they're maintained in their form so that there wouldn't be a, as much of a mass exodus of Indian Muslims to Pakistan. It was actually an effort to try to keep Indian Muslims within the country. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, well, this Muslim, uh, uh, personal law board was also talking about 
was that they are trying to dissuade the government from enforcing un uh, union civil law, which is basically a push to create a secular civil code. And so they're, they're fighting against that. They don't want that. Like just a kind of a one law for all, which is obviously something that I support. Um, Let's read some ahead. comments in the lecture. Uh, Megumin is saying India's Muslim personal law board is demanding a new blasphemy law for India because blasphemy works so well for, <laughs> works wonders for Pakistan. Yeah, no, that's exactly what the progressive group said. They're like, this is a recipe for disaster. Um, uh, yeah, this is the same thing. Yeah, well, this is. Uh, cocaine nah. cookie <laughs> saying, I'm kind of scared of Islam power in the whole world, especially in India and Egypt. Like at least here in Egypt, Stonian killings of apostate is a thing. I don't know what this person is talking about. Yeah, I don't know. This is like, okay, hold on. What I thought was interesting though, is my friend was telling me about how, so this personal law board is very conservative and they actually prohibit Ahmadis from participating in this organization. So they're actually a systemic discrimination against Ahmadi Muslims in India as well, especially if they're prohibited from participating in this quasi-governmental organization that has such, that's so powerful in the country. Um, mm. Kalsa Max is saying, 100% accurate. The WAC, I, is that how you pronounce it? WAC board and the Muslim Personal Law Board give recommendations to the government of India and the government follows it most of the time. I'm very proud of myself for summarizing that accurately because first time I dove into this, I made a mess of it. <laughs> um, and Kalsa is saying there would be riots on all sides if the government introduces a uniform civil code. Yes, this is what many people have told me as well, unfortunately. I do think that it is something that needs to be pushed for over time. But it when my friend was telling me about how when there have been changes to the Muslim personal law in the past, there's been massive riots that cause like so many deaths. Like it's a really, really, really touchy issue. This was, but, this is why the partition was a bad idea. You, you want India to. Yes. India, Bangladesh and Pakistan should have, I mean, it's too late to put them back together again, but they should come back together so yeah mm -hmm. and that's gonna happen it will never happen again it was a bad idea turn people on each other atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Avabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india we have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues including judicial harassment and censorship Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.